Good morning, Quadcopter 101, and I have something interesting for you today. We are again at the Trona Pinnacles here near Trona, California, and what I got today is not a review of a quadcopter, even though I got a quadcopter with me. This is my big XKX500, my largest quadcopter that I own. But what I am going to do today is we are going to review the Airmo M1 uh, phone. Now, the folks at Airmo, Airmo, saw a recent video that I did where I d dropped another phone uh, from a quadcopter and they said, well, we got a phone that's even more sturdy. And actually this thing is very sturdy looking. We'll find out if it really is sturdy. It's got a lot of finger marks on it because of my fingers. Let me wipe some of them off here. But uh, they requested that I also do a similar drop test from my quadcopter of the Airmu. Now this phone you know, just to give you a rundown, this is a very feature-packed phone. It's got 64 gigabytes of uh, internal uh, storage, uh, 6 gigabytes of RAM. Um, it, it is connectability. You know, it has just about every frequency you can think of to connect uh, no matter where you go in the world. You know, it's a very uh, useful world phone just about anywhere you go. You know, I've seen phones that only work in this country or only work in that country. This will work just about anywhere you go if you look at the specs of the um, different frequencies available. It is has uh, all the Wi-Fi frequencies, A, B, G, N, and also A, C. So you got uh, 5G Wi-Fi if you want to use this with 5G Wi-Fi networks or 5G uh, drones that are coming out recently. Um, that has that capability. Uh, Octa-core uh, processor built into it. Just all the kind of features you can think of. It even has, you know, um, wireless charging. You put this on an optional uh, charger platform, and I got the charger platform. It works real well. <laughs> So, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, plugging it in. But the biggest, and a 21 megapixel camera, I forgot to mention that. That's very good too, a Sony uh, sensor chip, um, dual, SIM, or dual SIM cards along with SD cards stored in here. But the biggest thing that they're advertising its capability is its um, IP68 uh, standard. Um, it is uh, uh, dustproof at IP6 and waterproof up to IP8. And that's pretty darn high for a phone. I think the Samsung 8 is one of the only other phones that has that. Um, there, I guess there are some others, but uh, you have to pay for that. <laughs> so this is not a cheap phone. And because of that, folks, keep that in mind. In no way is this a cheap phone. But again, we are going to drop test it and see if it still works after drop testing. So I hope you enjoy this flight. Okay, folks, I have the phone inserted into my dropper. <laughs> All I got here is a cardboard box to place the foam in there. It's just hanging in there. If I wiggle it forward, it should drop out. Um, I also have two cameras attached to record uh, both uh, horizontally and vertically. And I'm also recording via the, quad or the phone's camera. And finally, I got a, my hat cam. So first off, let's get it into the air and send it up and see how it performs. Starting the quadcopter, and pressing automatic takeoff. Yeah, I'm going to give it a throttle. The automatic takeoff doesn't seem to be working. Now I'm going to get out of the way of this. And we're going to move to the right slightly. And I don't want it to hit me, so we're going to go up. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And uh, I'm going to get back a little bit more because, again, I don't want to be hit by that phone when it does fall. Going up a little bit higher. Okay, I'd say we are a couple hundred feet up, folks. Let me do a slow pan about the area. Uh, it's going over that way. Where's my, why is it moving over there, folks? I don't know. Oh, because I was probably pushing. I was not doing a slow pan. I was doing a slow roll. <laughs> okay, that's about good right there. It's not going to hit me from that point there. I'll point it there. Now I'll do a slow pan around the area. Showing you the area that we're at. Trona Pinnacles here in Trona, California. Okay. I think we are ready for the drop test. I'll go up a little bit higher, actually. Just a little tad higher. And ready, set. Let's wiggle it and get that drop. 
Come on out of there. There it goes, folks. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Kaplop. And that's it. Let's do a return to home via its automatic return to home on the quadcopter. And we'll go over and see what kind of hole we made in the ground. Let the quadcopter come back by itself. Directly overhead. And it should be coming down. And I'm going over to find that phone. Hope it didn't make too big of a hole in the ground. <laughs> There's the phone, folks. Hopefully it's still operational. <laughs> it made a nice crater in the ground when it hit. Is it still recording? It still is recording, folks. And I'll use it to record the landing of the quadcopter. Amazing, huh? Being recorded by the phone after its drop test as the quadcopter lands itself. By the way, I like this big X500. Those of you who notice what my keepers, this is one of them, and the reason being it's the only one that's capable of doing this with <laughs> such a big, uh, heavy phone like this. Now, you know, since this is a, a sport phone, it's meant to survive this type of impacts. Um, it is not a lightweight phone, <laughs> so don't think that it is. Um, it's built to last. Um, it, you know, again, it's also waterproof. I forgot, I was, wanted to bring out uh, water to show you that such, but uh, these are the ports for it. It has a phone port on the bottom and a charging port on the bottom, a USB port on the bottom if you wanted to use USB. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.